Now we will do some stuff with electrical power. And you can see the IB syllabus topics there that we're going to hit. If you're following along your ISM packet, then this will be on pages 8, 9, and 10. To derive these power equations, let's take for granted that we know from Ohm's law that V equals I R. This is one super important equation. We'll assume we have. And another important equation is a simple power equation, PIV. Let's assume we have this. From these two equations, you can then get two other important ones. For example, let's say that we want to substitute in for voltage into our power equation here. So we've got power equals the current, and we fill in for V, that's equal to I. Oh. So then another important power equation that we get is P equals I squared R. Nice to memorize. Then you could also rearrange this if you needed to, and say that V over R is equal to I. And now, we could, if we wanted to, plug in for I. So now another power equation is V over R. And then this turns into V squared over R is equal to P. So here we've got one, two, three good power equations, and still our original Ohm's law, voltage, current, resistance relationship. Now let's define the electromotive force. So let's call this figure 5.6 and let's say that you've got a battery and you just connect to this battery a voltmeter. And this voltmeter might say that you've got about 1.5 volts when there is no current flowing through it. If you then take that same battery, still connected to your voltmeter, but then you connect it to something that lets electricity flow. Let's say a light bulb. If you've done this in practice, you'll know that the voltage goes down. And now that there is current, you might only get 1.3 volts. What we're going to call this original large voltage with no current is the EMF, which is also just called, it's that curvy E symbol, and that is the electromotive force. However, it's not really a force. It's just another word for voltage. But this over here, this lower, or what you might want to think of as the actual voltage when things are turned on, is always lower. The actual definition that you want to write down is that right there. So take a minute, write that in, and you'll be a better person for it. Since we're making good progress, we'll keep going, and we will describe this concept of internal resistance, which is usually a bad thing within batteries. And let's call this figure 5.7. So let's say that we're actually going to draw a little dotted outline of our actual battery here. And within that battery, we can pretend that there's the actual power source, but then there's a little tiny resistor with a resistance R, and that is bad. And that's going to go around to, let's say, a light bulb, and current I is going to flow. And you hook up your voltmeter here. You can't hook it up inside the battery. You have to hook it up 
outside of it. And you know that the EMF, this battery, should be 1.5 volts. You hooked it up before you turned the current on. You turn the current on, and now your sad little battery only reads 1.3. And we're going to call that our terminal voltage of only 1.3 volts because we're losing some of our voltage to what's called internal resistance. Right there. The equation for that, you can think that the EMF, which is always the biggest, is going to be a sum of your terminal voltage, which is always lower, plus the voltage that you lose to this internal resistance. In this case, let's say that's going to be 1.3 is our terminal, and we're losing 0 0.2 volts, which is bad. What that can break down into is, let's say this light bulb has a resistance of R, our EMF, or this terminal voltage, uh, it's going to be based on Ohm's law, the current times the resistance of the circuit. This lost voltage can break down into the same current multiplied by just the resistance of this little guy here. Another way to write this equation is if you factor out that current right now and you get the current times the resistance of the circuit added to that resi internal resistance within the battery. And you want that to be as low as possible, but unfortunately some batteries like flashlight batteries are going to have a pretty large internal resistance and when you plug them in their voltage goes way down. A better battery, like a car battery, will hopefully have a lower internal resistance and so when you connect your headlights to your car battery the voltage doesn't drop significantly or will be significant but not a huge amount below the 12 volts that is its EMF.